All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We are told that x and y are differentiable functions of t, or differentiable functions of time. And we want to find dy dt given that x equals 2, y equals 5, and the rate at which x is changing with respect to t is equal to 10. And we are given our function here, x squared plus y squared equals 16. And so the way we go about this related rates problem is we want to start by taking the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t and then plugging in the values we know and solve for the rate that we want to find. And so in this case, we know x, we know y, and we know the rate at which x is changing with respect to t. And so in this case, we're gonna be solving for that rate at which y is changing with respect to time. So let's start by taking the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. And so if we do that, we'll have d dt of x squared plus y squared, and that will be equal to the derivative or the derivative with respect to time of 16. And so if we go through with this derivative, we will have the derivative of x squared with respect to t, so that will be 2x, and then because we are taking that derivative with respect to t and not x, we need to multiply by the rate at which x is changing with respect to t. So that's going to be dx dt. And that's what we have to do when we take a derivative of a variable with respect to a different variable. And then we'll do the same thing for y squared because once again, we're taking a derivative with respect to t, not y. So this is going to be added to 2y times dy dt. And then this will be equal to zero because the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. All right, and so now we took a derivative of our equation with respect to time, and now we can plug in the values we know and solve for the value we want to find. And so if we do that, we will have two times x, which is going to be two, right? We said that x is equal to two, and then we are told that dx dt is equal to 10. So this will be multiplied by 10. And then we will add two times y, which we are told is five. So we'll have five times dy dt, which is the rate we are solving for, and this is still going to be equal to zero. And so then we can simplify this. We'll have two times two is four times 10, which will be 40. And then we will add this to two times five, which is 10 times dy dt, and then this is still going to be equal to zero. And then if we subtract 40 from both sides, we will have 10 dy dt is equal to negative 40. And then we can divide both sides by 10 to find that dy dt is equal to negative four. And so that would be the rate at which y is changing with respect to t in this scenario. And this is the simplest form of a related rates problem that you will see. Most of the time when you see a related rates problem, you're going to be given a word problem, which is going to be the rest of the examples that we look at in this video. So here we have that the edges of a cube are expanding at a rate of three inches per second. How fast is the surface area of the cube changing when the length of one edge is seven inches? All right, so the way we go about related rates problems like this is we have a general process. The first thing we do is we draw a picture and we write down everything we know. And then the second thing is to find an equation that relates what we know to each other. And we'll talk about the other steps when we get there, but let's first start by drawing that picture and writing down what we know so we can figure out what equation we need to solve this problem. So we're told that we have a cube, so let's start by drawing that cube. And what I'm gonna do, just so I remember that all these sides are equal, is draw these little tick marks through them. Maybe you took geometry and you've seen this before, but that will let me know that all these sides are equal. And I'm gonna label one edge as x. And so all of our edges can be represented with x because they're all going to be the same length. So now we have our cube drawn. Now we want to write down everything we know in this problem. So the first thing we know is we are told that the edges of the cube are expanding at a rate of three inches per second. So that means that these edges we just labeled, they are getting larger by three inches per second. So we know the rate at which x is changing with respect to time. So we can write that dx dt is going to be equal to three inches per second. All right, so that's one thing that we already know. Then we're asked how fast the surface area of the cube is changing, all right? So now this is the rate that we don't know, the rate that we are going to be solving for. So I'm going to write that ds, or the derivative of the surface area with respect to time, dt, is unknown, right? We don't know what that rate is. But we do wanna know what that rate is when the length of one edge, or all of the edges, is seven inches. And so we know at this particular point in time, x is going to be equal to seven inches. So now we have drawn a picture, we have written down everything we know about this problem. Now we're ready to create an equation that is going to relate what we know 
together. And so what are we going to do in this case? Well, we are told in the problem that we're looking at surface area, right? It's asking how fast is the surface area changing? And so that's a good indicator of what our equation is going to be. And so what is the surface area of a cube? How do we find that? Well, the surface area is just the area around the outside of this cube, right? And so if we want to find the area of one side of the cube, we would have x times x. Because if each edge is equal to x in length, then you would take x times x to find the area of that square. But that would be just one face of this cube. How many faces does a cube have? Well, it's got six faces. And so if we multiply six by that x squared, we then have the surface area of this entire cube. And so this is our surface area equation. And now we can take the derivative with respect to time of both sides, and then we can start to solve for our unknown rate. And so if we take that derivative with respect to time, we will have that ds dt is equal to 6 times 2, which will be 12, times x, and then dx dt, right? We took a derivative of 6x squared with respect to t, so we need to remember to multiply by dx dt. And so now that we have taken the derivative with respect to time of both sides of our equation, we can plug in our known values and solve for our unknown rate. And so we're going to have that ds dt is equal to 12 times 7, right? We wrote down that x is equal to 7. And then this is going to be multiplied by 3 because we were told that the edges of the cube are expanding at 3 inches per second. That is our dx dt. And then we can multiply 12 times 7 times 3, and that will be equal to 252. And so this is a rate of surface area changing. So we're going to have inches squared, squared inches, right? We're working with area per second. And so that is our unknown rate in this case. Let's look at another example. All right, so next we have sand is falling off a conveyor onto a conical pile at a rate of 13 cubic feet per minute. The height of the pile is five times the radius. How fast is the radius changing when the radius is six feet? All right, so again, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna draw a picture to represent our situation. And so in this case, we are told that our sand is falling off a conveyor into a conical pile. And if you're not familiar with the word conical, it means it has the shape of a cone, like an ice cream cone, without the ice cream, of course. And so that conical pile is the focus of this problem. We're talking about the height of the pile and we're talking about the radius of the pile as well. And so a cone is what we're going to want to draw here. And so I will start by drawing that cone to represent our pile in this scenario. And so then we want to label this cone, right? So we know that we're gonna be working with a radius and a height. So let's quickly draw that onto our diagram. I'll start by labeling the center of our base of the cone. And then we can use that to represent our radius. So I'll have R for our radius. And then the height of the cone would be the measurement from the tip of the cone to the base of the cone. So this is going to be our height H. All right, and so there is our diagram. So now let's write down everything we know about this problem so that we can figure out what kind of equation we are going to want to use. So first we are told that the sand is falling off into that pile at a rate of 13 cubic feet per minute. Now that cubic part or that third power should be a pretty big indicator that we are working with volume here. So this is going to be a rate at which the volume is changing. So we can start by writing that dv dt or the rate at which volume is changing with respect to time is equal to 13 feet cubed per minute. All right, and then the next thing we know is that the height of the pile is five times the radius. So that's a little bit different. We weren't explicitly told what the height is, but we do know that h or the height is equal to 5r five times the value of the radius. And then we are asked how fast the radius is changing. So we wanna know the rate at which r is changing with respect to time, r being our radius. So that's what we don't know. So I'll write dr dt is unknown, but we wanna know that rate when the radius is six feet. So in this case, we wanna know when r is equal to six, what is the rate at which that radius is changing? And so now we're ready to move on to our equation, right? We drew our picture, we wrote down everything we know and everything we want to know. Now we just have to come up with an equation to relate our different quantities together. And so since we're working with a cone and we're working with a rate of volume, it's gonna be a good idea to use the equation for the volume of a cone. And if you're not familiar with the volume of a cone, it looks like this. We're gonna have the volume is equal to one third times pi r squared times h. 
And so this is going to be really helpful in this case. But notice that we have an R here and an H, but only the radius is changing in this scenario, not the height. So because of that, we are not going to want to take the derivative of H, just R. So before we can take the derivative of both sides of our equation with respect to time, we need to rewrite our equation to be in terms of just R. And so how are we going to do that? Well, remember, we were told that the height is equal to five times the radius. So what we can do is we can plug in five R for H, and now our equation will be entirely in terms of R. And so let's do that. We'll have that the volume is equal to one third times pi times R squared times 5r. And then we can simplify to have the volume is equal to 5 thirds times pi times r cubed. And so now we have our equation and we are ready to take the derivative of both sides of it with respect to time. So we'll have dv dt is equal to 5 thirds pi and then the derivative of r cubed. And remember, this is with respect to time, so we're gonna have to multiply by a rate at the end. So we're gonna have three r squared, that would be the derivative of r cubed, times dr dt. That is the rate we want to solve for. And now we can actually solve for it. We can plug in our rate that volume is changing and we can plug in our value of r that we are interested in and we'll be able to solve for dr dt. So we know that dv dt is equal to 13 and that's going to be equal to 5 thirds pi times 3 and then plug in our value of r, 6, and we'll have 6 squared times dr dt. Now, if we were to multiply all these terms together, right, 5 thirds times pi times 3 times 6 squared, and then divided 13 by that value, we would isolate our dr dt, and we would find our final answer that dr dt is equal to 13 divided by 180 pi, or if you want it in decimal format, 0 0.02299, and I rounded that a little bit, and that would be in feet, per minute, right? In this problem, we are working with cubic feet, so feet, and of course our time was measured in minutes here, so that means that our rate at which the radius is changing would be feet per minute. And so this is our final answer for the rate at which the radius is changing with respect to time when the radius is six feet. Let's look at one more example before we end this video. All right, for our last example, we have that a nine foot ladder is leaning against a wall of a house. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the base is five feet? So just like we have started all our other problems, the first thing we want to do is to draw a picture to represent our situation here. So we are talking about a ladder leaning against the wall. So I'm gonna start with that and bring out our creative juices here and draw a picture. All right, there we go. Kind of a pathetic drawing, honestly, but it will do for this problem here. So we know that our ladder is nine feet long. So I'll start by labeling that. We'll have that this ladder is nine feet. And then we are told that the base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. Okay, so that's going to mean that the distance between the wall here of this house, if you know, you can believe that this is a house here that I drew, the distance between that wall of this house and the bottom of this ladder, so this point right here, this distance is increasing at a rate of 1.5 feet per second, right? So as this ladder slides down, the distance between the wall and the ladder is increasing down here. And so to make things easier, I'm going to label that distance as X, and I'm gonna label the distance between the top of the ladder and the ground with y. I think that makes the most sense since we are pretty used to using a coordinate plane at this point where our up and down direction is y and our side to side direction is x. And so that means in this case that our rate at which x is changing is 1.5 feet per second. So our dx dt in this case would be equal to 1.5 feet per second. Now let's say, and this isn't the case in this problem, but let's say that instead this ladder was being pushed towards the wall. How would that be different? Would this still be 1.5 feet per second if it was still the same rate written in the problem? It would be 1.5, but it would be negative 1.5 because the distance between the wall and the ladder would be decreasing, right? If we were pushing the ladder against the wall, instead of it being pulled away, we would have to make this rate negative because they're not gonna tell us that it's negative in the wording of the problem. They're just going to say it's moving at a rate of 1.5 feet. So you need to pay attention to which direction that rate is changing, right? So in this case, our distance is getting larger, so we keep it as a positive 1.5 feet. Okay, I just wanted to put a little note in there because sometimes that can be confusing as you get into other related rates problems, and it can really trip you up if you've never seen it before. 
All right, so then we have our dx dt written down, and then we can move on to the next part of our question, which says, how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall? So that means how fast is the distance between the ground and the top of the ladder changing with respect to time? And that's what we don't know. That's what we want to find. So we can write that dy dt is unknown. We do not know what it is, but we want to know what it is. Specifically, we want to know what it is when the base is five feet. So that means when our value of x here is equal to five. So we'll say x equals five. All right, and so that's everything that we know from this given problem. So let's now think of what kind of equation can we use to represent this scenario. This is a little bit different. This isn't talking about area, it's not talking about volume, it's not talking about surface area. We don't really know exactly what we're dealing with here. But think about what we can do to relate three sides of a figure, right? What shape is being made here? Well, I kind of gave it away when I said three sides, but we have a triangle here, right? If I were to try to kind of trace these lines here, we have a triangle there. And so what equation can we use to equate the sides of a triangle? Well, hopefully you are familiar with the Pythagorean theorem where we can say that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the other two sides squared added together. So that would mean that x squared plus y squared would be equal to 9 squared. And so then we can take a derivative of this with respect to t and then we would be able to plug in our values that we know and solve for our unknown rate. So then let's take a derivative of both sides of this function with respect to t. So we'll have 2x, and remember, we're taking a derivative with respect to t, so we don't want to forget to multiply by dx dt, and then we're going to be adding this to the derivative of y squared, which is going to be 2y times dy dt. Remember, we also have to write that rate because y is not t, so since we're taking a derivative of y with respect to t, we need to write dy dt, and this will be equal to the derivative with respect to t of 9 squared, which is 81, but it's still a constant, so we're going to have 0. So now we can plug in all the values we know and solve for dy dt. So we'll have 2 times x, which at this moment in time we are interested in is 5. So we'll have 5, and now that's going to be multiplied by dx dt, which we know is 1.5. So we will have 1.5, and then this is going to be added to 2 times y. Uh-oh, what do we do about that? We don't know what y is equal to, do we, in this case? We know what our x is going to be equal to, but what about y? Well, let's go back to that idea of the Pythagorean theorem, right? If we are freezing the motion of this ladder and we we are looking at it at the moment in time when x is equal to 5, what would the height be of the ladder? We know that the ladder is 9 feet, and we know that the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall is 5. We can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to find that other side. So we'll have a little side note over here. We'll say that x squared plus y squared equals 9 squared, right? And in this case, our x squared is going to be 5 squared plus y squared equals 9 squared. So we'll have 25 plus y squared equals 81. If we subtract 25 from both sides, we will have y squared equal to 56. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we'll have y equals the square root of 56, which we can then reduce if you wanted to. I guess you don't have to, but I'm going to reduce this to two square roots of 14 because 56 can be divided by 4. 4 times 14 is equal to 56, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that's where that 2 comes from. So we have 2 times the square root of 14 is our value of y. And so now we can plug that into our equation here. We'll have this 2 times y, which we just said is 2 times the square root of 14, so we'll have 2 square roots of 14, and then multiplied by the rate we want to solve for, dy dt. That's the rate that we do not know. So we'll have dy dt, and that's still going to be equal to 0. And now we can multiply 2 times 5, which is 10, times 1.5, which will give us 15, and then we'll be added to 4 times the square root of 14, dy dt equal to 0. And then if we were to subtract 15 from both sides and then divide by 4 times the square root of 14, we would find that dy dt is equal to negative 15 divided by 4 square roots of 14, which would also be equal in a decimal format of negative 1.00. And of course, this is a rate, so we need to label it with our units. And in this case, we're using feet per second, so we will have feet per second. And so that is the answer to this problem. All right, and so that's all the examples I had for this video. Hopefully you found them to be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get around to answering them. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.